Hey guys, my name is Hiroko Murakami, back with Nova Edge Academics, and today we'll be continuing with topic C4, Standing Waves and Resonance. Now before we dive in, I first want to apologize that we haven't been as active as we wanted. Uh, this was because, you know, me, myself, and the editor, we've been on vacation for a much needed one because of last year at the end when we were treating a lot of students to send them for the IB exam and preparing them. Now that we're back, we want to continue and we want to finish topic C, we want to finish topic D and E and also dive into IB Physics IA next month. Um, if those are the type of contents you like to see, then uh, it's good. But if you have other contents you want to see, maybe like uh, past paper problems or some other prep courses, then uh, let us know and we can try to make those videos. So let's know down in the comments below. Now, without further ado, let's dive in to topic C4 and finish it up. So. Topic C4 is all about standing waves. Now, so far we've covered a lot of types of waves, like transverse wave, which is like whipping a rope, longitudinal waves, like sound wave. We've also had EM wave, which is basically light, right? And all of these are the types of waves that we've covered. They have wavelength, frequency, velocity, all of these characteristics of a wave. We've covered the superposition, superposition diffraction, right? All of these stuff. <clears throat> now we're trying to bring this all back together and talk about standing wave. So what is a standing wave? Well, I can tell you what it's not. It's not another type of wave. A lot of students get confused that standing wave is another type of wave. It is not. It is just a phenomenon that occurs under specific condition. So the type of wave that makes standing wave can be any of the types. It can be transverse, longitudinal, EM wave. All of these can create standing wave. And that creation of standing wave is under a specific condition, usually when there's a reflection of wave and there's superposition, superposition that occurs. To make a distinction between type of wave and phenomena, I can use like an analogy like um, centripetal force, right? Centripetal force on its own is not a type of force. It is a phenomena where the object in question has a force that's perpendicular to the velocity, which is why it goes in a orbital motion. Now that force that's causing this centripetal force or centripetal motion could be like friction when a car is turning to the right, right? It could be a normal force. It could be just me swinging a bucket, right? That type of force is, uh, it can be anything. And they're causing this centripetal force. It's the same thing with standing wave. That type of wave can be anything. It can be transverse, longitudinal. They are the ones that are causing this standing wave phenomena, okay? So let's talk about that phenomena. So this happens when there is a reflection of wave. So if you have blue wave that's going to the right and the exact same wave, exact same frequency, exact same wavelength comes back and superposes itself. Now, what happens when that happens, right? Let me show it to you on a simulation. Okay, so we have here a simulation provided, thank you to University of Colorado. Uh, we don't intend to infringe on copyrights. This is merely for educational purposes. So. Uh, it is fair under fair use. I'm going to start the simulation and show it to you. So first, let's create this transverse wave. So we're creating this transverse wave by whipping, right? By whipping, and that could be done by this guy. It can be done by hand. It doesn't matter, right? Now, that wave reflects back. So there's a reflection of wave that's interacting with the oncoming wave. Now, this is what happens. This is called standing wave. Now it looks like it's going up, down, up, down, alternatively. And this is what we call standing wave. Now, as you notice, there are actually some parts where they don't displace at all. And there are some parts where it fluctuates all the time. If I make this in a normal speed, then probably it will be much clearer that this guy, for example, is just bouncing back and forth, bouncing back and forth, right? This guy is not moving here, right? Now, these two types of points, we call them nodes and antinodes. So I'm going to talk more about those. Okay, so nodes and antinodes. So as we've seen in that simulation, there are points where they don't go up, down, up, down. These are called nodes. Okay, so there's a lot of nodes like these guys, right? Whereas antinodes are the places where it fluctuates. So all of these points are antinodes. Okay, important to know those terminologies. Okay, so it's, it's pretty cool phenomena, right? Where they go up and down, up and down. And that's just because of perfect overlapping superposition between ongoing wave and 
reflecting wave. Now this can be happening because of sound wave too, right? I said that it can be done by transverse longitudinal EM wave, right? A uh, sound wave is just a longitudinal wave. So if I have, let's say in a pipe, right, the sound reflects back and forth then and interact with each other, then it's gonna cause that uh, standing wave that I just showed you, exact same way, right? Perfect example is a guitar. A guitar is a real life example. If I take a video of my guitar strings and freeze it in a frame, you're going to see that they're shaped like this. Okay, that is actually due to standing wave. You might be saying, okay, it, it might be just a normal wave, transverse wave, right? Because we're whipping it back and forth, but it's not because when you send vibration, it goes to the end of the guitar and comes back. And when it comes back, it interacts with each other, causing this standing wave um, that's like this, okay? So now let's talk about the string wave pattern because this is the math behind this and it's really important for paper two, right? Now what's going on is, well, first let me talk about harmonics. So what are harmonics? It's basically how many waves are fitting in that given length. So in this guitar string, for example, there's been a lot of waves, right? A lot of standing waves. And so it would be at a very high order of harmonic. But then if we come down to the first, second, third, and fourth, it looks like this. First harmonic doesn't even have a full wave. It has half a wave, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you the math behind this to quantify frequency, wavelength, uh, and for you to adopt it for your calculations, okay? Really important. So what's important is not to memorize, okay? What I'm about to show you is not to memorize. It's how to derive, how to draw it, and then how to derive it, okay? So first harmonic, let's see. So if I have length L, what is the wavelength? Well, the wavelength is the length of one complete wave. And one complete wave would be like this, okay? So the wavelength actually will be two times length L, right? Because you have wavelength like this, that's double the length L. I can have two Ls, right? Frequency would just be velocity over lambda, which is two L now. Okay, remember frequency is velocity over lambda. How about for a second harmonic? Well, the wavelength now is equal to length L because that's one full length, uh, one full wave, right? So what is frequency? That's like that. How about third harmonic? Well, the full length of a wave is here. So that's the wavelength. That wavelength is basically two thirds of a length L. So frequency will be V over two thirds of length L, right? How about fourth harmonic? Well, that's just, this is the one wave. So that's gonna be L over two. Okay, as I said, do not memorize these, okay? Now, one thing to note is at what harmonics the guitar strings or any strings vibrate at depends on the tension, weight, and length. Now this is not something you need to know uh, in terms of mathematical calculation, but it's good to know that you know these guitar strings, there is some math behind it. There is something that governs it. So the tighter the tension, the faster the frequency, okay? Now let's do some practice problems. So pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, so first important thing about all these wave things is to draw it out. So first harmonic, how does it look like? It just looks like this. Right, we've already covered this and this is length L, right? So if I wanna do part A, I, the wavelength is equal to two times length L because I know this is half a wavelength. L is half a wavelength. So wavelength is equal to two times length L, right? Which is just two times 0 0.98. Part two, frequency would be velocity over lambda. Pretty simple. How about part B? Now we wanna do fourth harmonic, so let's draw it out. Fourth harmonic would be like that. That's length L, so wavelength is half of length L. And frequency, same concept. All 
okay? That's basically it. Now, how about part C? Explain how your answers would change if the tension in the rope was increased. If you increase the tension, then that means the oscillation becomes faster, right? And that oscillation becoming faster means frequency increases. So if frequency increases, wavelength decreases. And this doesn't matter at which harmonic we're talking about, it's across all harmonics, okay? Let's do another practice problem. So pause the video and give this one a try. So first, let's draw it out. Second harmonic, how does it look like? It looks like this. How do I know? Well, it's practice. You have to be able to draw it out. If you're able to draw it out, then I can mathematically derive the wavelength. Right? I'm able to visualize that this is one full wave. One full wave is equal to length L, which is equal to 0 0.28. So being able to draw it and then deriving it, this is really, really important. Why do I stress this? Because when it comes to the end of your IB two years and you're gonna about to take the exam, you don't want to be overloaded with things to memorize. Remember, you don't have just physics, you have math, you have chemistry, you have probably like economics, business, uh, literature, whatever, right? You're taking a bunch of courses for two years content. It's impossible to memorize everything. So don't try to memorize and understand the concept, draw it out and derive it yourself. Okay, so now that we know the wavelength, I can calculate the frequency. Part B, determine the wavelength of the sound that this produces in the surrounding air. Okay, so all of these strings that's vibrating, they produce sound, okay? They produce sound at that frequency, okay? Because it's hitting the air and is being compressed and release at certain points, at certain intervals. So that frequency doesn't change. But because the velocity at which air propagates is different from velocity of the string, the wavelength changes. So frequency stays the same, wavelength doesn't. So wavelength is velocity over frequency, same frequency. 0 0.4 Sorry, that's a typo, 0 0.4 meters, okay? Now that we've covered transverse wave creating wave pattern and creating standing wave, I'm gonna show you a little clip uh, to show you standing wave done on a 2D plane. Okay, so that was a short clip. Um, note that again, there's no copyright that we're trying to infringe upon. This is purpose for the education, so it's for use, okay? so. All of these sand that was placed on the metal plate, once we turned on that vibrator on that metal plate, the plate started to vibrate and that vibration causes standing wave. So from the center of that plate, we have wave traveling to the edge of that circle. And once it gets to the edge of the circle, that wave bounces back, right? Once it bounces back, they interact causing standing wave. Now these sand, or salt or sugar, whatever you want to use, why are they in a certain distance? Well, it's because those are the points where you have nodes. So when you have the nodes there, that's where it's stable. That's where there's no displacement. So they just stay there, okay? And so this is a perfect illustration of standing wave in a 2D plane. Now, this is, a, is an example with a circle. If you do a square, then something funny happens. And that's because the length changes. The length is not uniform. When you have a circle, the length from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle is the same everywhere. So it creates this exact same pattern. But if you don't have the same length, like you have a square instead, then a lot of funny things happen and it's actually stunning. So I'm going to link a video down below. If you click it, then you'll be able to watch that as well. Okay. We're going to finish the video here. Next video, we're going to talk about pipe wave pattern how sound creates standing wave in a pipe, and other things like boundary conditions, natural frequencies, damping, and resonance. Okay, so we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this kind of video, then consider giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. We have a lot more electric style video and content like this in our channel, so feel free to go check it out. Uh, if you're looking for additional guidances like one-on-one -on -one tutors in IB subjects, SAT, TOK essay, IA's writing, etc., then uh, go to our website at novaedgeacademics.com, fill out the form, and get in touch with us. In the meantime, we'll see you in the next video.